Dano and today I am doing my January wrap up video. So I am so happy with how much I managed to read last month. I managed to read 13 books. I am super stoked with that. Like that is a lot of books. Um, but I also was a part of two readathons. One I completed to the fullest and the other not so much but they still helped me get to the 13 books like that's the main chunk of my reading uh, so that definitely helped and I recommend readathons to anyone that wants to sort of just increase how much they are reading through the week because it definitely pushes you to find those little moments in your day that you can be reading so that you're accomplishing those daily page counts if that's the, one of the challenges and uh, sort of getting through all those books. So anyway, let's get started with the books I read and I'll be going in order that I read them. So let's get started. So the first book I read for this month was Apollyon by Jennifer L. Armentrout and then I followed that up with Sentinel which is the last book in this series and this is the half blood no, the Covenant series. Um, so this is books four and book five. And I read the rest of this series at the end of last year. So I was finishing up this series. So basically this is my first series for the year completed. Um, and I won't say too much about these books because they are the finale of the series. But basically the whole series follows a girl called Alex, who is a half-blood, which means her mother is a what is it her mother is a pure blood which means that she is a heme she's a hematoy which is a descendant of the um demigods so i hope that makes sense um so basically going down the lines alex is a descendant of the demigods and um, there's this kind of idea that the pures are uh, the, the leaders and uh, kind of the gods of this society and the half-bloods are either they're sent into a lifetime of servitude where they're given this elixir that um, basically makes them brainless and all they do is serve or they are chosen at a very young age to uh, fight and become a guard because half-bloods are the only ones that can see the demons uh, which attack pures for um, kind of like their essence um, and so they require half-bloods to guard them and then some things happen and Alex as well as some others that she kind of meets and even in some circumstances falls in love with um, has to kind of fight and make things right and just in the world and um, yeah it, there's a lot more to it but I don't I, I will eventually do a um, series review with a spoiler section in it because it's very hard to explain without not like without giving the spoilers but it is a really good series definitely well worth it I think I gave uh these books four stars and I believe my average rating for the entire series is around four and a half stars so I really did love the series as a whole uh the only thing I will say just quickly on this series is if you're the type of person that doesn't tend to read novellas and um, sort of just reads the p actual books in the series, this series you kind of do need to read the novellas to know what's happening, especially Elixir. Um, if you don't read that one, you kind of don't know what's happened when it jumps to the next book. So I definitely recommend you read the novellas. So read it in actual book or, or yeah book order, not just all the actual books and then go back to the novellas you need to read like Damon's 0.5 novella and I think Elixir is 3.5 so you need to read it in that order 
But anyway, moving on. The next book I read for January is The Iron Daughter, which is the second book in the Iron Fae series by Julie Kagawa. And this series follows Megan, who um, <laughs> once again finds out that uh, she is not as human as she once believed and uh, she has to enter the uh, is it never never world no it's basically the dream world and um, she's now got to save this dream world because the influence of technology is overpowering people's dreams and we don't imagine the way that we used to so uh, kind of she's having to deal with all this technology and the iron influence in this world and the I really enjoyed the first one I, and I would say I enjoyed the first one more than this one um, but I love the characters that are in both and I look forward to reading the rest of this series uh, and yeah it's a really good series and it's been out for ages so if you haven't picked it up pick it up because the entire series is out so you can just marathon all of them which is awesome. The next book I picked up was for the Winter Biennial Bibliothon. It was the first book I read for that and it was also the group read and that is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Kerry Maniscalco and I gave this book a four and a half star rating. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed this book. I did have a few not really issues, but um, a few things that could have been improved on the book. Uh, one of them being, I don't know how you'd actually improve this, so I kind of feel bad for saying it. But because I kind of picked who the actual, like, uh, murderer was, it kind of left me spending the last bit of the book being like, and when are they going to put it all together? Like, I've worked it out, why can't you? Um, but apart from that, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoy reading books on um, serial killers and things like that. So it's really cool to have this book that looks at Jack the Ripper. And I really enjoyed all the uh, accurate parts of this book. So Carrie did a lot of research and she sort of explained some of that in the back of like the names and... Um, locations and some of the things that happened are what actually happened in real life and in the investigation back in London in those days and I really appreciated this. I also appreciated that despite you know trying to be a historical fiction book the, the female in this book is a very powerful and um, she's not trying to go with society and what they tell her and she wants to do her own thing and she wants to be a strong and powerful female regardless of what anyone else says and as much as you know that probably wouldn't have really happened back in those days I really appreciated reading about it in today's society um, and I really enjoyed all that and it's definitely a great read. I liked Audrey as a character, um, I loved Thomas as a character, he was great and I cannot wait for the next book which is all about Dracula so I'm definitely looking forward to that one but this was a very solid uh, debut book and I can only hope for bigger and better from Carrie so I can't wait for that one. The next book I picked up is my first graphic novel for the year and that is The Blacklist Volume 1, The Gambler by Nicole Phillips and uh, the illustra illustrations, the graphics, are done by Benny Lobel. I love the Blacklist TV series so when I discovered that there's, there's actually a comic book series that kind of goes along with it. I had to pick it up um, and I really enjoyed this. It does follow the same like storylines and lines of the TV series so that's super cool and I love the illustrations. The artwork is so good and I like the fact that the characters look like the TV show characters so it kind of feels like it's tying in and I really did appreciate this. Um, I gave this four stars. I need to really double check my ratings before I do all this. Um, but yes, definitely well worth it. If you love the Blacklist TV series, I also recommend you pick this up. Also, if you just love um, 
sort of the crime shows as well this would be a good graphic um, or comic for you so the next book I picked up um, yeah I would definitely say it's one of my favorites for the month and that is Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff I cannot believe it took me so long to pick up this book so many people have recommended this book and I was kind of afraid that it wouldn't like match the hype that everyone's been giving it but it definitely does. I love the way this book is set out. I love the uh, mixed media. I, I just, I had such a good time reading this. And it's so easy to get through even though there's a stack of pages. But because not all of them are like full text and some of them are a lot more graphic style. It's just really easy to get through. And I definitely recommend this to anyone that hasn't read it. Um, it's kind of like space mystery I guess and that's not really my sort of typical um, reading genre but I still really loved it um, and yeah I, I flew through this so it won't take people that long to actually get through it and see what all the hype is about because it's definitely well worth it and then because I loved the first one I picked up Gemini because why not? So I flew through Illuminate and I flew through Gemini and I really liked this one. Um, I didn't like it as much as Illuminate but I still really did enjoy it. It's the same uh, mixed media format. However, it isn't really the same characters. So it's the second one in the series and it ties, like, if you've read Illuminate you know um, about like the spaceships names and so you're looking at a new spaceship and what's going on there and then at, through the book and more so at the end you see how they all tie together and it's really cool so you're following different characters but they do link up with the characters in book one and I cannot wait for the third book which is coming out Hopefully this year, as far as I know, there still hasn't been a release date set and I just need it. I need it in my life. Um, but it will be sad to, because I'm pretty sure it's only going to be a trilogy, so it will be sad to finish them, but I need to read it. Because yeah, yeah it was such a good book. And you, again, I flew through this book. The next book I picked up is A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallero and if you didn't already know this book is about the descendants of Sherlock and Holmes. Oh my god, Sherlock and Watson. <laughs> okay, anyway. And um, it's set at a boarding school and it's kind of like every generation of um, Holmes's and Watson's always are paired up with each other so James Watson is sent to the same boarding school that Charlotte Holmes is currently attending and the idea is for him to go and help her out and for her to help him out um, but of course there is a murder that they need to solve uh, which is kind of cool and I I really enjoyed how um, there was aspects of like the actual Sherlock Holmes um, books and everything that are incorporated into this one. So some of the idiosyncrasies that Sherlock shows um, are present and it's kind of like a well is that because it's in her um, lineage that she also acts this way and um, is it sort of a genetic thing that that's what she's prone to or is it because she's sort of brought up knowing so much about her ancestors because of course there are these books that Watson wrote and um, maybe that has an influence and it was just really fun to see like all the ties between Sherlock Holmes and Charlotte Holmes and that was kind of really cool because I really like Sherlock Holmes and I really loved this book and I cannot wait for the next one which is coming out really really soon and that's called the last of august and i'm definitely looking forward to that one and we'll be picking that up as soon as i can and yes i really enjoyed this book the next book i picked up is 
The Sleeper and the Spindle by Neil Gaiman and this is kind of like a mix between a Sleeping Beauty and a Snow White retelling and it is super cute, super fast paced um, and sorry I got the hiccups now. Um, I love the illustrations in this, like they are amazing and I really thought that the um, book itself was super cute. I didn't realise how much writing was going to be in this book like it kind of threw me like there's actually quite a lot of text it's pretty small but um definitely enjoyed it I think it was a really well done retelling mashup kind of book between the two fairy tales and um it's definitely gotten me into reading a lot more of Neil Gaiman's other books because so far from what I've read they're very quirky and different but I'm really loving it so yeah definitely check out this book if you haven't already it's super easy to get through and yeah so the last comic book I read for this month is Miss Marvel No Normal and this is by G Willow Wilson and oh I always forget the first name no Adrian Alfona is the artist and I really enjoyed this book I wasn't expecting it to be quite the way it was. I was going into this book knowing that it's um, about how Miss Marvel gets her powers and she's just a normal everyday person which I really enjoyed. However, I did think that there'd be a lot more kind of superhero side to it um, but it was kind of more about coming to terms with she has these new powers and she should be using them for good but also balancing her work and her personal life and her religion and um, her family and how you know you can all fit all those things in and all these sort of expectations that people put on you and how you can balance all that so I still really did enjoy this and it's definitely worth the hype I was just expecting a lot more of the superhero side of things more than the personal development of the character I guess but I will definitely be continuing on with this series and um, seeing how she goes from being this normal everyday person to a superhero and yeah I definitely enjoyed it. So the only audiobook I actually finished this month is um, my reread of A City of Glass. I am rereading uh, the well re-listening to the entire um, the model instruments and infernal devices series um, which is super fun because I kind of want to go through all of them again and it's nice listening to them because it's a different format from when I read them so I'm definitely liking that and it does help that you know sometimes you get a little bit distracted when you're listening to an audiobook so it helps that I've already read it and that I know exactly what's happening but it's just been told to me in a different way and I'm able to pick up on different things that I didn't previously um so yes I really enjoyed that and I'm continuing I'm almost done with um Clockwork Angel but I didn't quite finish it so I'm not counting it um but yes, definitely enjoyed that. I gave it a five star, four and a half star. It was very high up there. Um, yes, definitely loving it. Um, although it's not my favorite book of the series. The next book I picked up from the library, so I don't actually own a physical copy of it, and that is Dumpling by Julie Murphy. I have heard so much about this book through um, YouTube as well as through some podcasts that I listen to and it was highly recommended for positive body imaging and uh, things like that and it definitely talks a lot about being happy with who you are and in your own skin but basically it is about the story of a girl who her kind of world is centered around these beauty pageants because her mother is the organiser of the towns and the uh, country's oldest Miss Bell, um, no Miss Blue Bonnet, yeah, 
um, and it's a pageant and um, there's of course this stock standard stereotype of image that the girls are expected to portray when entering this um, pageant and she decides that she is not even though she's not this standard um, body type she's still going to enter because it's something that her aunt thought about doing and her aunt certainly didn't fit this build um, but because her aunt is no longer with them and she passed away she decides to carry on and um, go forth and enter and then ends up in this group of girls and inspiring other girls to enter the competition as well and even though she doesn't win the friendships that she's made and the experiences that she's um, sort of received while going through the process of the pageant and having to deal with some of those issues of well you're not this stereotypical like beauty pageant contestant and um, how that affects her and um, I, there were some aspects of this book that I wasn't too keen on some of it felt a bit more like she was just complaining rather than either she's happy in herself or she wants to do something about it like it felt like she was kind of stuck and I, I totally understand and m myself I've been through going through you know I think it's something that uh, we all struggle with and but I in a sense it just came across as complaining with like no follow through it was just complaining for complaining's sake actually yeah that's more what it was it was complaining for complaining's sake not really having a basis and kind of contradicting what she had just said like she was going through I hope that makes sense I definitely think it's well worth a read though and definitely well worth um, giving it to like a son daughter niece nephew or anything who's kind of hitting that age of um, puberty where body image and things are starting to um, be a topic that kind of needs to be discussed it's definitely a re relevant book for that and there are some very good messages in this book so I definitely recommend it um, if you're after that sort of book and then the last book I read for the month is The Bad Beginning by Lemony Snicket and I have posted a book talk on this book but I basically wanted to reread this book since I haven't read it in years and sort of sit down and watch the new Netflix TV series and do a comparison so I also have a comparison video up as well and I will be continuing that on for the other three books that are a part of season one and I really enjoy this book I still maintain it's a five out of five stars for me uh, I know I've said this a million times on this channel but this is a series that got me into reading so I have so many positive memories of this series and this book and yes I love this book and I think every kid should read it it is definitely more of a middle grade um, book but I still love it and uh, there were certain things that I picked out of it now that I'm a lot older that I didn't pick up on before and some parts that are downright creepy like you know the whole marriage idea that's just creepy now that I'm older and thinking about the age difference and things like that um, but yes it was definitely a great way to end the month and I am now moving on in the series and We'll talk about that in my next wrap up, but yes. So that is all 13 books that I read for the month of January. Again, I am super stoked with how much I was reading this month and I hope that it is something that I can continue on for the rest of the year. Maybe not 13 books every month, but uh, you know, having at least, I think I'd be happy with at least a book a week. Like that's kind of my bench line standard but even I don't know that that's still quite a lot for some people so yeah um 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos that I publish, please hit the subscribe button so that you're um, aware of when I do publish. I'm trying to upload videos a lot more frequently and I've got quite a few book talk videos coming up soon as well as the rest of the um, a series of unfortunate events, book talks and then comparison videos so that will be up very soon. And I'll see you guys later. Bye!